this is the whispering voice and as always I hope you're all happy and well and having time for relaxation now this video is just an in-between video and I've uh, oh it's binaural by the way on the uh, the microphones now I'm not sure if you're picking up I don't think you will but it's raining quite heavy outside but I'm in my little sort of um, a room I've turned into a um, sort of office if you like and this is where it's uh, quiet and um, well hopefully <laughs> nice and quiet and where I do my editing and things like that and I get a lot of um, comments in the videos and the comments um, all seem to revolve about people enjoying the cooking in the woods videos and the talking about food so I thought I would do a sort of in-between video before I do the cooking in the woods video which will be coming I thought I would do some talking about food and in particular food I can remember there was one thing a treat which came uh, which was available in of all places a bakery and years ago my grandmother my late grandmother and she used to send me to the bakery with a basket like a wicker basket and it used to be a bit embarrassing but we all had to do it so it wasn't so bad um, and that's another thing really we were better equipped then for recycling than we are today because there was no plastic carrier bags for shopping everybody took their own bags for example you would see a lot of people wheeling a little trolley as we call it a shopping trolley um, they used to have little flowery designs on them and you'd see old ladies wheeling them up the street you still do today sometimes and the basket the wicker basket I've just just mentioned anyway we used to well my grandmother used to send me up for the bread because she liked it um, straight out of the oven and we all used to fight well not literally fight but <laughs> not physically for the crust with fresh butter on and uh, I've never ever tasted bread like that since and I think one of the reasons it tasted so good well I think it was because the ingredients they used obviously there was no like in a factory today there's probably all sorts of ingredients I can't even pronounce going in them but then it was just basic ingredients and they were baked in a coke oven um, sort of coal oven beautiful it was and the smell oh it was wonderful they also did fresh cream cakes and um, strawberry and cream sponges chocolate with the chocolate sauce cakes and sort of sprinkled with things called hundreds and thousands which were very minute sweets as we call them I think you call them candy maybe in America um, but as 
of things used to send me for this bread and it had to be well baked and now these things stay in my mind anyway if my uncle was about he used to shout get me a loaf as well so okay then and my treat was a thing I've I loved at the time and it was a sort of biscuit with cheese but it wasn't real cheese it was like um it's hard to describe really um it, it was called crisscross and I've never ever seen or heard of it since that shop sold it I don't know what happened to it but it was one of the nicest biscuits it looked like um, in this country we have a chocolate bar called Twix which are two fingers of chocolate with caramel and shortbread smothered in um, milk chocolate but they looked like that they weren't chocolate but they looked they were sold in that format two fingers of biscuit with this sort of um, a cheese thing inside and they were wonderful if I had one of them for going for the bread I thought I'd gone to heaven um, so that was one little memory of food another thing a little bit of a sad story really my grandmother's mother my great grandmother she was a wonderful lady, she was totally deaf and um, they used to shout at each other <laughs> it was, if you didn't know them you would sort of think they were rowing but they, were, <laughs> but they weren't, they used to shout at each other because they were, my, sorry, my, my great grandmother and her sister, that's right, they were both deaf and they used to shout at each other anyway the food they cooked was very basic then and a big part of their diet them days was rabbit because my great grandfather used to go rabbiting and it was a free meal because meat and things were expensive and they couldn't afford it and she did all sorts with his rabbit stuffed it with sage and onion made onion gravy all sorts of things but this one particular day you may hear the rain now I hope that adds to it this one particular day she went to check on the rabbit in the oven which was um, a sort of old fashioned arga oven it was um, heated by the fire which they had them days and there was two rabbits roasting in the oven and there was a leg missing of one and they just stood there astounded about this um, because it was obvious it had been ripped off in a hurry and it was I think five or ten years later they found out what had happened what it was the lady next door her daughter they were very very poor family there was a lot of our family was very poor then and um, obviously everybody had to watch the pennies and that's why they used to eat rabbits and things like that and grow their own vegetables but next door was terrible because the um, I think the father used to either gamble or drink all the money and there was hardly anything to to buy food and the daughter, the little girl, was so hungry she crept in and could smell the rabbit cooking and very carefully with a cloth opened the oven and sort of quickly pinned 
pinched and ripped one of the legs off to eat and th that's never come from me that it's um that was my watch i'm sorry that bleep um it'll always stay with me that you know so we today we um worry and complain about not having this that and the other and i bet most of us take it for granted about the food on our plates or the food that we can just if you're hungry you can go to kfc or to mcdonald's or to a restaurant or to the to the supermarket but it wasn't the case in them days and they had to sort of eat what was given to you and be glad of it it's um but i was going to tell you we used to go walking as you know with and i used to do a lot with my late uncle and he was terrible <laughs> He was terrible when uh, when the apples were out. There used to be quite a wealthy family living not far away, and they had a beautiful orchard with pear trees, apple trees, and various varieties of apples. Some were cooking apples, which were very sour and bitter, and others were eating apples and they had a gardener so everything was pristine and wonderful and he used to take me just before dark and <laughs> he was just terrible <laughs> and um, the garden had a wall it was like Peter Rabbit you know this huge wall around it and he used to say right get on my shoulders and fill your pocket <laughs> so I used to go and it was high for my I was only small but it was thrilling and exciting and uh, it was wrong but um, I used to get on his shoulders and uh, fill my pockets and he used to get me down gently and he used to give me a couple of apples <laughs> but what he did with them was eat those the eating ones but he used to also take the cooking apples and his sister my late aunt as he never married or did she she used to bake apple crumble and apple pie well on baking day and that's another funny thing she had they had days like um, Monday was washing day and uh, Tuesday was baking day and you know Thursday the fish man came around and Friday they had fish and this sort of thing and it was a uh, it's a wonderful thing really how they didn't have to think of life in that way because it was just routine and uh, she used to bake I think it was on a Tuesday and you could smell the pastry and the, oh, I've never such light beautiful pastry and these apples were full of flavour um, actually I'm yet to find an apple which tastes so good um, little memories like that and she used to always after she'd finished making the pie ready for the oven she would always sprinkle it with sugar and as a very big treat you were allowed to have cream on top or custard which is a yellow sauce like a very sweet sauce we have in the UK and you know little simple things I suppose you would think of today but uh, great luxuries then and another um, thing they used to do was make a syrup toffee and a treacle toffee you'd have no teeth left but it did taste good <laughs> and uh, that was 
a treat and that wasn't often that um, I'm trying to think what else that was another thing a lot of people did is to slice um, onion cucumber and there was something else it could have been no not lettuce I think it was cucumber and onion put them in a big bowl and then fill it with with uh, vinegar the dark vinegar wasn't the uh, white vinegar it was the malt vinegar and after a week it looked horrendous black nearly but that was their salad because there was no fridges the vinegar kept cucumber and onion but I must admit I used to because I was given it as a child it was wonderful the taste because I, I think that's why I love vinegar so much today and uh, I think someone also said that as they roasted and I may have said this before but as they used to roast and fry a lot of things in those days no microwaves they didn't think of steaming things I think they steamed puddings but they wouldn't dream of um, steaming meat or anything like that but um, because of their vinegar intake it used to, used to counter um, counteract or counterbalance the fat intake so if you like, once the vinegar went into the blood, as did the fat, it balanced itself out of something. It used to keep the arteries clear. They were big believers in that. And they did live to good old ages when, and in good health. So that was either luck or there was some truth in it. And I like to believe there was a bit of truth in it. They were very active people, so very fit, so uh, everything worked together. Any more little treats I, uh, I used to enjoy? Um, menth, well, no, menthol eucalyptus, cough sweets, and uh, cough candy twist, I remember. all sorts of things really yeah it was a wonderful time and I'm glad I can make these a lot of these um, meals myself now because I asked and watched as a child and it stayed with me because that generation is gone now my uncle and my grandmother uh, they were the last generations in my family of that age and it would have all been lost all that knowledge all the uh, ingredients and the methods to make things how to keep things preserve things um, it would have been all gone I don't know everything obviously but uh, I've, I've got a, a good knowledge of different things so, um, yeah, so this is just a uh, waffling on, really. I tell you before you go, this is a first for my channel. You'll hear the camera switch on, so excuse me a minute. I'll give you a, this leather chair squeaking, I'm sorry. Um, I'll give you a, an insight glimpse of my little desk and office there we go that's a lovely warm light isn't it and that's my camera bag SD card there that's uh, a hard drive I use that's just the um, the broadband internet and that's the computer I edit on quite a powerful computer is a good one there we go a little live show and tell <laughs> so my next video you will see will be the cooking in the woods video and I've no idea what I'm gonna well I do have an idea uh, what I 
fancy cooking, but I think I may have done it a couple of times before, so I may have to think of something else. Um, we'll see. We'll see. But anyway, I'll leave you good people, and I hope I leave you relaxed and in good spirits. So thanks for listening and taking the time to listen. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. And I'll speak to you soon.